This is the DF83V. It's a vertically mounted flat burr 83 millimeter auger fed grinder with a variable speed DC brushless motor at 680 watts. All the bells and features you'd want on a grinder in 2024. It's also made by the same people who make this, 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 and this grinder. But I want to argue today why this might be their best grinder yet and one that you should actually consider, especially if you're in the market for a budget alternative to an end game grinder, especially in this 83 millimeter burr set range. I've compared half a dozen burr sets for this grinder. We're going to start obviously with the stock burrs, the espresso and the brew burrs. Talk about what my experience has been with both of them. But let's talk about this, the DF83V. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Kyle here and thank you so much for watching this video. It's been a few months actually being in the studio and I'll talk about why in an upcoming video. It's been incredibly busy around here with some really exciting stuff. Well, let's talk about this grinder here. Now this grinder and this one here, which is the same grinder just in silver, uh, were both sent to me by Espresso Outlet and Me Coffee. Now I had no idea that they were going to send these grinders to me. In fact, I feel very privileged as they both just showed up to my door. Now they don't get to see this video before you do. They had no say and like I said, I didn't even know these grinders were showing up. There's going to be no bias here. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts I promise that because I've got some critiques here that need to be shared as always as you've expected from this channel full disclaimer for you so that you're aware I'm gonna leave a link for both of these shops down in the description below if you're interested in these grinders later on in this video I'm gonna be giving away this grinder right here to a patron in the future if you want to check that out it's as low as a dollar a month and I give away gear and coffee every single month you can check that out in the link down below and let's keep on moving. Now let's learn all about this grinder, these burrs, 83 millimeter burrs and the juiciness that they bring. But speaking of learning, let's talk about one of the greatest resources to learn from right now, which is a sponsor of this video, and that is Standard Magazine. Now Standard is a sponsor of this channel and has been a supporter of this channel for years now. And Standard is a resource I truly believe in. If you've been watching this channel, you know that. It's a magazine for specialty coffee. You're watching a specialty coffee YouTube channel right now, which wonderful, it's a great place to be. Subscribe if you haven't already, but this this right here is another thing you need to subscribe to because this magazine is a wonderful resource full of colors and pictures and everything you need to know about specialty and what's happening in the industry. Now, right now I'm reading an awesome article on the co-owner of Fry Hats, which is an amazing roastery in Europe and more specifically on Lex. I have a lot in common with Lex. I own a roastery as well. And hearing the story of somebody who started from scratch, building an amazing company. You've heard me say this before, but it's articles like this that keep me coming back to standard. And if you want to try it for free, you can use the link down in the description below. Try it out. All you have to do is pay for shipping and you get to try this amazing resource. So go check it out. Use that link down in the description below. And thank you standard so much for sponsoring this video. Now let's quickly talk about aesthetics. Now this is a grinder. I could not figure out what it looked like until I realized it almost looks like a combination between option O with the black, obviously the silver as well, and the sleek design, the minimalist design, mixed with a Titus grinder. This DF83V is literally the offspring of option O and Titus. Mommy. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. I think it actually is their best looking grinder to date, personally. This is $7.99, which is a fairly affordable grinder for what it's offering, keep in mind. I hate that they have plastic pieces all over. The black one hides it better than the silver. As you can see on the silver, this piece here, the RPM dial, and then the switches on the side are all black. And that kind of just gives it away that there are some plastic components on this, but the black does hide them a little better. And I think overall, it looks pretty good. Though I'm gonna dock some points for the main power switch, which on the side has this weird rubber accordion look to it. And it's just not quite as premium as the rest of this grinder. It, it reminds you that this this is a Turin or a Chinese made grinder by Turin. And that for me is just so upsetting because without that, if we just had two of these stainless steel buttons here, I think it would have really looked premium. I digress. And to use it, we simply take some coffee, pour it into this spot here. And then on the side here, there's your main power switch. So we're gonna turn that on. So I'm gonna turn this up to, let's say 1200 RPM, just because we're crazy like that. And then I'm gonna adjust this. So let's change it to 40. And I'm gonna turn this power button on. We're gonna use our bellows. And it's as simple as that. This is magnetic, it comes out of the chute. We can remove the chute if we want to. If you're cleaning it fairly often, this stays fairly clean, but we can go ahead and knock any residual grounds. And there we go, 
that's the DF83V. Now let's take this apart so you can see what's actually happening here. Now at the top here, like I mentioned already, you have your bellows. Now up here, you're gonna notice that this has an anti-popcorning disc. It helps just reduce any coffee beans being popped back into that bellows, big fan there. Now this is all aluminum. Basically everything on this grinder is aluminum. Now up here, you're gonna see that this is your grind chute. But before we get to that part here, this on the front is a big dial. And this is where I say it gets a lot of inspiration from like a Titus grinder, because Titus has the exact same adjustment system. Here you have the ability to reset your zero point with a little Allen key is adjustable right here. You can adjust that and change your zero point when changing burrs. It is stepless, so it's great for both espresso and filter if needed. It's got some, some grip to it. It feels premium, it feels good. Now, to remove the burr carrier and the burrs themselves, uh, all you have to do is twist this whole piece here, and this will remove that adjustment dial as well as the burr carrier. Now from here, we can pop this front plate off, and this front plate will come with the stationary burr. Now this stationary burr carrier can be removed from the front dial. And then on this side here, we currently have the 83 millimeter SSP multi-purpose burrs. In this grinder here, we have the stock DLC espresso burrs. Again, we're gonna talk about burrs in this video. Stick around, I promise there's a lot to cover. So with these here, you can see there's not a ton of retention here, but there is some coffee dust. Uh, nothing crazy. Now what's happening is as you pour your coffee beans into this grinder, it's falling through this big square part here in the burr carrier and into this spinning auger. Now this is the first time we've seen an auger fed system in a DF grinder. And I have a lot to say about this. Auger systems have a lot of pros, a lot of reasons why you'd want to consider an auger fed grinder over something that is gravity fed. One of those being consistency. Think about an empty hopper, you have popcorning, there's less mass pressing down into the burr set. But when you have a full hopper, you have more mass pressing coffee into the burr set. No popcorning is possible. And that's very similar as an auger, as the auger is feeding the coffee to the burrs manually. There's no gravity fed system there. It is manually pulling the coffee from the hopper into that burr set. Now, a big question a lot of people have is, is this also a pre-breaker? And I'm happy to report that yes, it does have a pre-breaker. Now I can't speak to its intentionality if this is supposed to be a pre-breaker or if it's just an auger that does pre-break your coffee, but regardless, it is doing so. Now the spread on the auger is fairly large and so it's only breaking 20 to 50% of the coffee depending on the coffee size, sometimes a little bit more, but I do think this is better than nothing, though it's nothing perfect by any means. But regardless, it is exciting to see something from a DF grinder have an auger with a pre-breaker and especially something in this price range. It's not perfect, but coffee grinders in my experience in the past with pre-breakers and an auger design like this often beat out grinders without them in the taste category. After here, you can see your burr set is attached to that auger system. And this has that slant, it's leaning. Oh, I shouldn't touch that. So the beans are fed backwards. That's why we have the slant backwards as that back burr is the rotating burr. Grinding your coffee, pushing it outside of the burr and those sweepers are pushing it down, both with gravity and with those sweepers through the chute past two little pins and that is a plasma generator reducing static directing it into your grind cup that is magnetic that goes here on the back here you obviously have your 680 watt dc brushless motor dc brushless is a uh, pretty common with variable speed 680 watts is incredibly powerful and i know what you're wondering does it stall the DF64V had a variable motor too, and it was the first approach from Turin with the Vario Speed DC brushless, and that one had some stalling issues, especially on version one. Now, does this one stall? No, it doesn't stall. I'm happy to report that, but it does fail safe. If the auger is overloaded or there's a coffee that's incredibly dense and you're not slow feeding the grinder, I have experienced many times the coffee grinder stopping. It doesn't stall, but it stops itself. So there's a couple of ways that I avoid this. One of them is slow feeding, really lightly roasted into the hopper. But if I put a whole hopper full of coffee or dump 20 grams in here at a cold start at like a lower RPM setting, it will fail safe. And it seems like it's not an issue of the torque of the motor, but this does ramp up in speed. Because of that, what I'm finding is sometimes the auger gets overloaded and as it gets up to those speeds, it will fail safe if there's too much in that auger system. That's only the case for really dense coffees and RPMs under 1500, which is most of them. But you just gotta be aware that if you have really lightly roasted coffees and you wanna push a lower RPM, you're gonna wanna slowly feed your grinder, which I would recommend anyways. There's a lot of reasons why you'd wanna do that, a whole nother topic, but let me show you and I'll put this back together. So this on the bottom has this little pin that can easily fall out. Be aware of this as you remove this burr chamber for the first time. 
This slides back in, but that little pin guides you to ensure that it's always properly aligned where it should be. You put this piece back on the front. This is again a lightly roasted pink ball. That's coffee that'll be going to our subscribers in January. It's light, it's bright, it's citric, it's floral. It's beautiful, it's incredibly juicy, but because it's dense, it can really put this grinder to its limits. So if I cold start this, putting the coffee in first, coffee's now in the chamber. We'll put this on a lower grind setting, like let's say 15, and it's at 600 RPMs. Again, it can go as low as 300 and up to 1600. See that time there, it didn't stall. I find the multi-purpose SSP burrs pretty good. So let's try it on this guy, which has the Espresso DLC burrs. And right there. So it's not jamming, it's not stalling, but what's happening is that auger, I believe, is getting overloaded and the motor is fail safing to ensure that nothing worse happens. So not great, but if you wanna reset this, you can simply just turn the power button off on the side, the main power switch, that accordion button. Wait a second as it resets, turn it back on, maybe a coarser grind setting too. So right there, I had to really coarsen up the grind setting, reset the grinder and then it'll grind through. Again, you saw here on the multi-purpose SSPs, that wasn't an issue, but for the espresso bursts, and I think if you overload it and you don't slow feed it, it has an issue. But again, if I do this instead, that doesn't overload the motor at all. So let's talk about workflow. Obviously, that is a workflow issue that you may not love. If you want that low RPM, that's why you're purchasing a grinder with variable speeds, and you want a really lightly dense coffee, and you wanna use those espresso stock burrs, then yeah, you may wanna consider that. And honestly, I would just recommend for whatever method you use, to not cold start this grinder because it has that ramp and speed. You're gonna have a different distribution. Of course, you can cold start it, but you need to be consistent and always cold start because if you go between hot starting and cold starting, you're gonna have different results. So just be consistent and choose one and stick with it. Though I would recommend for this grinder, going with turning the grinder on, then feeding the grinder, and there has been no fail safe for me when I do that. Beyond that fail safe reality, I think this is an incredible grinder to use. The bellows isn't 100% necessary because the retention on this grinder is incredibly low. I measured after grinding five kilos to season this grinder right here. I pulled the burst set out as you can see and it measured 0.4 grams of retention. Keep in mind that was an extreme test of five kilos of coffee. You're not going to be grinding five kilos at a time. If you are you're crazy. That's a lot of coffee. So if you're grinding 20, 30 grams at a time, you're probably gonna have less than that. Sometimes, depending on how coarse you're grinding, you might get more static, and so you might have to tap on the hopper itself. But if you're grinding for espresso, I find the retention's very, very good. The plasma generator combined with the burr sets on this grinder just produce fantastic results. The stepless adjustment on the front is a joy to use, and I find it great for both espresso and those fine-tuned adjustments, being a stepless adjustment system, as well as filter coffee. It's got plenty of range. Speaking of the plasma generator, you do need to keep this clean as if not this can start to build up retention as well so once in a while just get a brush in there keep that clean to ensure that you're not building up retention on something that's trying to help reduce it now this is a dc brushless motor and dc brushless allows it to be variable in speed but one other huge pro with the dc brushless motor is that they're near silent at least a good quality dc brushless is this is at its higher rpm range at 1300 to me, it's very comparable if you've ever heard like a P64. This is slightly louder than the P64, but they're very comparable in the style of sound that they create. They ramp up in speed with a very, very quiet hum. Here's some comparisons of this grinder besides some of the competitors.
This here is the grind chute, and this is magnetic. It comes off like the Zerno Z1. So now I find this doesn't get too dirty as long as you clean it every two to three times, but it's really nice to be able to remove that chute really quickly. A huge flaw with a lot of the other DF grinders because they often had rectangle or square chutes that had corners that got just jammed with a lot of coffee. This doesn't have that. It has no space for coffee to really get jammed. It has a pre-breaker above the plasma generator to just reduce clumps. This pre-breaker is not plastic with flaps like we've seen on the DF grinders. It is metal, as you can see here. I think it's a really genius design. Honestly, it's putting it in categories of other grinders that are just more well thought out and thoughtful. And that's something we've seen lack in these turn grinders is that thoughtfulness, that incredible engineering, the, the little things that make a grinder really, really good. And this grinder has a lot of those things. I think the adjustment on this is really nice to use. I think the lack of retention in this grinder is really nice. I think the way that the grind chamber is removable, the way that the burrs can exchange, all are really well thought out for a grinder made by Turin. And that's something that I have to catch myself saying because if it was any other grinder manufacturer, we'd come to expect a lot of these things. And thankfully this grinder has a lot of the polish that we see on other manufacturers. Obviously though, if you look at it, like things like this accordion power button, can be a hit or miss for some people. But again, some of these things are kind of minor and every manufacturer has its flaws. But overall, when it comes to workflow, I'm very impressed. This is easily, for me, the best grinder for workflow for the DF grinders. Unless you want a porter filter fork and you're using this for mainly espresso, you might not enjoy having to use a dosing cup because obviously you're not gonna want to put your porter filter under here. It's not gonna be quite as enjoyable to use as something like the DF83 version two, which has porter filter forks that you can grind directly into. This is under 58 millimeters in diameter, so you can fit this inside of a port filter. You can shake this around, then do your WDT, and then pull your shot. So it's still not bad. I actually really enjoy this and prefer this, but that is something you might want to consider if you are mainly and only using this for espresso. But let's talk about burr sets. Let's talk about how it tastes. Let's talk about the results in the cup, one of the most important attributes of a coffee grinder. Now I've got lots of different burr sets that I've been testing here. I've got your SSPs, your DLCs, your Mozzies. The primary ones I tested are the new burr sets that you can get on this grinder. You have both an 83 millimeter brew burr, which is this guy right here, and then you also have an 83 millimeter espresso burr. Now, both of them are very interesting because they're no longer made by item mill. Now, item mill has typically made all the burr sets for the DF grinders. Now, item mill burrs are okay. They're nothing more than that. They're nothing great. They're nothing bad. I think they make good results for the price. They're a good budget alternative burr. But what we're seeing now is that Turin has decided to make burrs uh, locally. Okay, so let's start with the espresso burrs. Now, I compare them directly with the SSP high uniformity burrs and the 83 millimeter size. Now, the SSP high uniformity burrs for both the 83 and the 64 are good burrs for like a traditional espresso and they're good for like an all-purpose style of brewing. If you want one burst set for both espresso and your like medium, medium light style coffee, maybe dark roast, this is a good burst set. I would not recommend this burst set for filter coffee for light roasted coffee. I find it has too much astringency for me. It creates too much complexity and it really mutes and, and blends and blurs the clarity in the cup. Now this burst set, the espresso burst set, uh, is also designed similar to the SSP High Uniformity. They all have a very similar design in both their pre-break and their finishing teeth. Now the high uniformity has 13 pre-breakers. The new Turin Burr for the Espresso has 12. And I find that their finishing teeth are similar but not identical. Now what's interesting is this one has a carbon coated design. They're very slick, they're very slippery in comparison to like the Red Speed. I find that the cup results for the new Espresso Burrs from Turin ha have a slightly higher, sharper acidity than the high uniformity burrs from SSP. The high uniformity burrs have a really balanced cup. You have really good sweetness, some good acidity, but nothing overly crazy. But you have a really good separation for the most part, but they're more like a good burr for making good texture, good body. You get your ooey gooey espresso shots. If you like milk based drinks or want to do them occasionally, it's a great burr to do basically everything you need to do. The espresso burr set from Turin is similar in many ways, and this might be a little controversial. I prefer the cups from the Turin burrs for the espresso burrs over the SSP High Uniformity. I found them a little bit more modern in style, having a higher, sharper acidity. The acidity was not as blended or as, as attached as they are on this SSP burr set. They were a little more separated, but depending on the coffee, I actually preferred that. I found that some of my, my Brazilian coffees that I've been brewing on espresso for more like textured, milky drinks, drinking them black, I preferred them on this burr set in the Turin. 
than the SSP. I found them higher in, in acidity and they just tasted really, really sweet. And that said, I put five kilos through this grinder and it seemed like it needed even more seasoning as depending on the shot, it wasn't incredibly consistent. And sometimes you would even get sputters and spurts from this burr set. So it's not the cleanest burr set until it's seasoned, but keep in mind, once it's seasoned, I found the results getting a lot better. And this burr set is honestly a really good budget alternative to this one. It's not my favorite burr set by any means, but it is a great option for somebody who just wants to buy a grinder and not have to fuss, not have to install anything else or spend any more money. Now let's talk about the filter coffee. This is where things get really interesting for me. Like I said, this burr set here has the uh, multi-purpose burrs from SSP and I put them up directly against this burr set here. I did many tests, many brews, but the multi-purpose SSP has long been one of my favorite burr sets, including in the 83 millimeter burr set. And the results from the multi-purpose burrs are incredibly good. This grinder with the 83 millimeter multi-purpose burrs is one of the best filter coffee grinders in around that thousand dollar range. Now, how do they compare to the stock brew burrs? This burr set is really good for the price. I found the clarity on this to be incredible. The acidity to be beautiful. It was nice and it was attached. Good sweetness. We could really push the extraction on these. I was getting 23 to 25% extractions on here with no astringency. And that was great to see from a budget burr. I can't do espresso. I've tried. It just doesn't have the finishing teeth to be able to get fine enough for espresso. If you look closely, you can see there's gaps in the finishing teeth there. So if you want a burr set to do both, the espresso burrs can do both espresso and filter, uh, where you might want something a little more heavy in body, a little more darker, like a medium dark roast, and these brew burrs aren't gonna do well for that because they're not gonna produce the same body, that texture, that silky mouthfeel you might like from a heavier bodied coffee, especially if you put dairy in your coffee. And if you do, I would recommend the espresso burrs for filter coffee and espresso, but only in that case. Otherwise, I'd recommend the brew burrs for filter coffee. This burr definitely hold its own. It's not better than the multi-purpose SSP. I still preferred the multi-purpose SSP. I, I did find a little more stringency on this one versus the multi-purpose burr. That's not the multi-purpose. A quick note on alignment. Both grinders were slightly different out of the box, though they were both pretty good and definitely usable. But if you're picky like myself, you may want to do a quick shim. But the stock burrs were pretty good, but not perfect. So let me summarize this and clarify just so that we're on the same page. I like this grinder. I think it's the best DF grinder to come to the market. I think the workflow is far better than any of the other turn grinders that have come out yet. I think the aesthetics are much better, though it's not perfect. Some of the flaws like this power switch are just incredibly ugly and the fail safe feature is just a little too sensitive for me. Now the adjustment system is great. The retention is incredible. I think the only other thing is the price, which is right now $7.99. But overall, I like this grinder a lot. I'm excited to pit it against some other grinders in this market that are comparable in this range. So again, get subbed if you haven't already. What are you, what are you doing, friend? I would love if you would hit that subscribe button down below. It would really help with this channel grow. And again, tamp that like button if you haven't already. Again, if you want to check this grinder, I've leave links down below, including my Patreon if you want a chance to win this grinder in the near future. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Let's have a great 2024. We'll see you guys all through the year in many videos like this. See you guys all soon. Peace out.